Welcome back to another Porsche car whisperer video. If this is your first time checking out my channel, my name is Mason Gilcrest, and on this channel, I cover absolutely everything Porsche. And today, I'm going to be doing a requested video from one of my subscribers. Shout out to you, Vinny, comparing the 2021 Macan GTS to the 2021 Macan S, and which one will fit your lifestyle best. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off by talking about the price difference between the Macan S and the Macan GTS. Well, the Macan S starts right around $60,200, and the Macan GTS starts right around $72,100. So there's a pretty decent delta from one to the next. So what exactly do you get in that $12,000 or so delta from the Macan S to the Macan GTS? Well, I'm going to start off with the power plants of both of the cars. On the Macan S, you get a 3-liter single turbocharged V6 that has about 348 horsepower and about 354 foot-pounds of torque. Now on the Macan GTS, it's a little bit smaller motor, but there's an additional turbo. It's a 2.9 liter twin turbocharged V6 that has about 375 horsepower and about 384 foot-pounds of torque. So smaller motor, an additional turbo and more power, a little bit larger, a single turbo and less power. So what does that mean in real world? Well, with zero to 60 times on the Macan GTS compared to the Macan S, shaves about 0.4 seconds. So on the Macan S with Sport Chrono package, zero to 60 is about 4.9 seconds. And on the Macan GTS, it's about four and a half seconds. So it's about half a second between the zero to 60 on the S and the GTS. Now with top speed times, it's about five or six miles per hour. So it's nothing substantial. Now, if you're just looking at the front of a Macan S or a Macan GTS or a Macan, how do you tell what model it is. Well, on the Macan GTS, on this scoop here, right here in the center front bumper, it's a lot, lot bigger than it is here on the Macan S. And on the Macan S, starting in 2019, there's a, there's a nice front little plastic spoiler here in the front. The Macan GTS does not have that spoiler. So that's a pretty big difference here on the front bumpers between Macan S and Macan GTS. Now going to the headlights. Both of these cars have upgraded headlights, the PDLS Plus headlights, which are top dogs when we're talking about Porsches. But on this car, Standard comes with a LED headlight with a four-point headlight daylight running light. Still, of course, very, very bright, but they're not near as good as these headlights that we have here. Now, Macan GTS comes standard with PDLS headlights. So, of course, the Macan GTS has a little bit better headlights as well as Standard. So, in nighttime driving, you'll just be able to see a lot further than you can on the Macan S Standard headlights opposed to the Macan GTS. Now, there's quite a bit of changes when we're talking about wheels, chassis, and a little bit about the brakes. So, let's go ahead and dive to the side of both of these cars. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk just a little bit about the brakes on the Macan S and the Macan GTS. I'm here on the front wheel of a Macan S. Now, they're almost the exact same brakes that are standard on Macan S to Macan GTS, but there's one major difference. This caliper right here is silver on the Macan S, and it's a really nice red on the Macan GTS. They're the exact same size, six piston, about 360 millimeters here in the front, and it's a single floating caliper in the rear that they're about 330 millimeters, so a little bit smaller. So the brakes are virtually identical from the Macan S to the Macan GTS. Uh, just the main difference is gonna be, of course, this caliper color, silver, and we've got red on the Macan GTS. Now the Macan GTS that I currently have is a little bit different. It's got the upgraded PSC B brakes. So let's go ahead and talk about those. Okay, so as you can see, this, this current Macan GTS that I have has these white brake calipers. What does those mean? Well, they are PSCB brakes, which stands for Porsche Surface Coated Brakes. But what's the point of having these PSCB brakes? Well, they're larger, they last longer, and a lot less brake dust. It's said that they have about 80% less brake dust than the standard steel brakes. So, these are still six piston, but the diameter of the rotor is quite a bit bigger. They're about 390 millimeters in diameter, opposed to 360 for the standard brakes on both the Macan GTS and S. Now, in the rear, they're also larger as well. So, they have, still have a single floating caliper, but the, the diameter of the rotor is about 356 millimeters. So, it's about 26 millimeters larger than it is on the standard steel brakes of the Macan S and the Macan GTS. So, I highly recommend it if you guys absolutely love performance. I would definitely get these brakes. They last a lot longer. And after a couple thousand miles, these rotors have a really cool mirror looking finish. Like you can almost see your face in them. So they look 
fantastic. So I would highly recommend it. Okay, now let's talk just a little bit about the suspension between the Macan S and the Macan GTS. This is a pretty big difference. On the Macan GTS, it comes standard with the uh, adaptive air suspension with PASM, which stands for Porsche Active Suspension Management. It actually lowers the car by about 10 millimeters, and it gives you several different suspension drive modes. Comfort, uh, which is normal, Sport, as well as Sport Plus. So that actually stiffens up the dampening um, inside the suspension. Now, the Macan S comes standard with steel springs, so you don't have the option to be able to change the dampening of the suspension, which I think is an op awesome option, as if you're going for a long drive, you can of course just keep it in comfort, or let's say you're going up Angeles Crest, you can put in either Sport or Sport Plus, and you can just feel how much stiffer the suspension gets as you're driving. So that's a pretty big difference. Now, if you were to option your Macan S with just that single option, it's about 2,500 bucks. Now, we talked about a $12,000 Delta a little bit earlier. That really starts to eat in to that Delta. I actually did option a Macan S with all of the very similar options you'll find here on the Macan GTS, of course, with the exception of the motor. And the price was just about the same, and you're still missing a couple options. The black aluminum on the inside, as well as these wheels and the engine, which is one of the biggest, biggest things. Okay, so here on the inside of the Macan S and the Macan GTS, you're not going to find a lot of differences depending on the packages that you end up deciding that you're going to put on the Macan S versus the Macan GTS. Now, some of the biggest differences are going to be if you get a Macan GTS, you're going to come standard with these sport adaptive seats that have now what we call Alcantara or Race Techs on the center. Now, on the Macan S, you're going to come with the standard eight way seat as well, but they're not sport seats, so they don't have as much support here on the side bolsters, either by your legs or by your back. Now, these feel great. These are the optional 14-way seats that come with one of the premium packages. This car actually has Premium Package Plus, which comes with an array of options. Now, let's just say we had a standard Macan S and a standard Macan GTS. This trim here that's on the doors as well as here in front of the glove box, it's in this what they call piano black. On the Macan GTS, it comes standard with a black brush aluminum, which looks killer and super sporty. So that's a pretty big difference. Now, on the steering wheel, that's all going to be pretty much the same. Uh, here in the center console, you're going to have a couple different buttons on the Macan GTS. So let's go ahead and hop in the Macan GTS and talk about some of those differences that you're going to have from this car to that car. We'll see you in the GTS. So just by hopping in this Macan GTS, you can tell it's just a step up than it is over there on the Macan S. I think part of what makes it feel like it's already a step up is this brushed black aluminum here on the doors as well as here in front of the glove box. It just looks for a really sporty look. And these seats, they just hug you like crazy. Now this car has the uh, uh, optional 18-way seats. Now the four-way seats are going to feel very similar. They're just not going to be able to adjust as many ways because they're a sport seat. Now here in the center console, there's quite a few fun buttons. For example, we talked about the PASM or uh, Porsche Active Suspension Management, you can see that there's actually two buttons here in the center console to be able to stiffen up the dampeners, normal, sport, and sport plus. There's also a lowering option, so you can actually lower the vehicle. I know we talked a little bit about that when we were talking about outside, but you can lower the car just down a little bit. Now, one of my favorite buttons is the sport exhaust button. That comes standard here on the Macan GTS. It's an option over there on the Macan S. It's a little over $2,000 option on the Macan S. So, we're starting to eat away at that $12,000 Delta we were talking about a little bit earlier. Just between the adaptive air suspension and the sport exhaust, just like that, we close the gap by five grand. So it starts moving pretty, pretty fast. So if you are in the market for a Macan, I would highly recommend if you love the sporty feel and the, just the sporty look that you work your way towards the Macan GTS. Yes, it's about $12,000, but if you like a lot of the sportier options, Macan GTS is your car. Now that sport exhaust, there's, a, there's, a, there's flaps in the exhaust system. You can open and close them to make the, the exhaust sound louder, and it definitely sounds louder. Go ahead and check out this sound clip. Now, as standard, the Macan GTS is going to have heated front seats. Macan S as standard does not have heated front seats. So again, there's another difference. This car has the lane keeping assist that actually keeps you in the lane as you're driving uh, and makes a little bit of an audible noise. Now, seat ventilation on a Macan GTS isn't going to come 
with that option if you have the Race Tex or Alcantara seat centers, just because that's going to be the center portion here in the seats. You're not going to have the option to be able to cool it. Now, a couple options I highly recommend if you like the sporty feel. Maybe you don't want to get the Macan GTS, but you're still thinking about uh, adding some sporty stuff to a Macan S. Well, I highly recommend getting the Sports Chrono Package which gives you this, these uh, different drive modes right here on the steering wheel. Gives you individual, normal, sport, and sport plus. Also gives you the sport response button. So what is that sport response button? Well, I like to kind of call it new school NOS. It's not really what it is, but if you press that button, it opens up the wastegates to the tur turbos in the Macan GTS and turbo in the Macan S for 20 seconds. And it gives you the chance to help with any type of turbo lag. These cars don't have much turbo lag to begin with, but it really helps you just accelerate super quick. <laughs> So that's something I would highly recommend in both cars, um, e either one, Macan S or Macan GTS if you're getting those. It has a premium package plus, which I highly, highly recommend if you're not looking to get the GTS interior package. With this premium package plus, it adds a lot of goodies. It adds the sunroof, 14-way seats, heated front and rear seats, ventilation, Bose surround sound system, Porsche entry and drive, which is a very nice convenient option as soon as you get in and out of the car. You can lock it by just pressing the outside of the door handle. And then there's just a little silver fob that stays here in the key. And then there's also auto dimming mirrors. So I would highly recommend adding that option to the Macan GTS. The car already comes with a bunch of goodies, but this is a great option that gets you even more features. So something I would highly recommend. Now when we're talking about the Macan S for the premium package or premium package plus, it's actually a little bit more expensive than it is here on the Macan GTS by about 500 bucks if we're talking uh, premium package plus. Now, when we're talking about the premium package on the Macan S, what does it actually offer? Well, it gets you the panoramic sunroof, Porsche entry and drive, lane change assist, heated seats, auto dimming mirrors, the LED PDLS plus headlights, and the Bose surround sound system. So, let's talk about some of my recommendations if you're ordering one car or the other car. I would highly recommend getting at least the premium package on the Macan S, and if you're getting a Macan GTS, I would recommend getting the premium package plus as well as the Sports Chrono Package. That gives you the full meal deal in terms of performance, with the exception of the brakes. The best part about a Porsche is getting behind the wheel. So let's go ahead and take this Macan GTS for a spin. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start off here in the Macan GTS, and we're gonna have just everything on normal mode. So we're gonna have the adaptive air suspension in the normal setting and then we're going to go ahead and switch it up and just see some of the differences that you can feel and i can already tell you this car feels nice it feels absolutely amazing now the shifting is the same between the macan s and macan gts they both have the seven speed pdk box so there's no difference there now so i'm going to go ahead and put the sports chrono here into sport mode you'll automatically hear the sport exhaust turned on which sounds sounds like a porsche has these little popples. Ah, I love it. it. Just feels so, you just feel so connected to the road in all Porsches, but in, it, in this Macan GTS, it just feels, it, it just feels really special. Of course, the speed, it has that twin turbocharged V6 we discussed a little bit earlier, but the sound, the sport exhaust, did you hear that? That was some awesome back popples. It just sounds just amazing, and it's just super sporty. Oh, that sound is cool. Now, something else we didn't discuss a little bit earlier was the tachometer. Porsche takes a lot of pride in their GTS models, and they don't skimp out at all. Just looking here at the tachometer, it says GTS, so you know exactly what you're driving when you're driving it and the performance just feels fantastic now i'm going to go ahead and put it in the sport suspension mode and it just feels amazing now this car also has ptv plus which stands for porsche torque vectoring it really helps you get around the corners it actually breaks the inner rear brake as you're getting around the corner just to help you pull and propel out of the brake out of the corner and i can really feel it when i was just back there making those turns at really short speeds it just makes it feel extra sporty and i can I can really feel it. Wow. 
this car feels this car feels really good I've, I've driven a lot of Macan S's I mean the Macan S came out in 2015 so uh, it's of course changed pretty substantially over the last couple years but it's uh, doesn't feel quite this good this car just just feels so connected to the road it just feels it just feels special uh, if you guys have the means t for the extra twelve thousand dollars again sixty thousand to seventy two thousand I would pick the GTS hands down the Macan GTS feels it just feels extra special with the suspension bits we talked about earlier the adaptive suspension the sport exhaust gives you a lot of feedback as you're driving the car and a lot of back popples it just makes you feel really, really connected to the car and the road, which of course, that's kind of what Porsche is all about. But uh, I would highly, highly recommend the Macan GTS uh, over the Macan S uh, any day. And again, like I said, $12,000, it can be pretty substantial. After some options, you'll probably get the Macan GTS somewhere in the 80s, especially after you option it with the Premium Package Plus, which I recommended earlier, as well as the Sports Chrono Package. You're gonna easily be in the uh, low 80s but it's still, to me, 100% worth it. The Macan S with some options, you're gonna be you know, in the 70s. Now, that Macan S that we had earlier with the upgraded wheels, the premium package plus, uh, the upgraded sport tips, they had a lot of options on it. It was pretty much 77,000. So, Macan GTS with some really, really good options, you're gonna be like four or five grand more. I still think it's 100% worth it. This Macan GTS has a ridiculous amount of options. Uh, it's it's low to mid 90s as far as MSRP, which just was all the options: the brakes, the Porsche Torque Vectoring, the Sports Chrono Package, the the tow hitch, the leather, the carbon fiber steering wheel. There's just an immense amount of options that this car has. I don't think you need to spend that much money to still get the same exact experience. Uh, anywhere in the low 80s is going to be fantastic. You're going to get a killer looking Macan. Uh, it's going to also have the tinted taillight in the back. So instead of having any red bits, it's just going to be this nice black and silver tinted taillight, which looks phenomenal. As I was asked to discuss in this video, uh, talk just a little bit about the upcoming electric Macan. So not a whole lot of information yet out there on it, but it's going to be probably released sometime in 2022. So we're out about a year. And what are going to be some of the specs? Well, I've heard some crazy specs on that car. Uh, apparently, it's going to have a 300, over 300-mile 300 range. It's still going to have the same 800-volt technology that the Taycan has, which they actually got from the 919 Hybrid, uh, which no longer is no longer racing. Um, and I've heard some crazy charging figures as well. So I've heard it's going to maybe charge in, like, you can get a 60-mile charge in as little as, like, five minutes. <laughs> That's nuts. Now that's on a 370 kilowatt charger. That's a that's a kind of a test kilowatt charging power. We don't have those we don't have those chargers yet here in the U.S. Um, but still, uh, they're saying maybe in 20 minutes you're going to get like over 200 miles of range. So that's even faster charging than the Taycan. So I'm very very curious to see what that car is going to bring. It's also said that Porsche is still going to be having the option to get the internal combustion Macans as well. So. There's going to be the electric Macan coming out and the uh, standard Macans that are, of course, gasoline powered. So I'm really excited about the electric Macan too. I mean, the specs just sound absolutely ridiculous, but uh, probably going to have some crazy acceleration figures, I would imagine, too. Probably somewhere kind of like the Taycan. I mean, the pull on the Taycan is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so I would expect something very similar electric Macan that they're going to be coming out with. So. A lot of exciting things coming to Porsche and coming to the Macan uh, in the next year. If there's anything I didn't cover or any questions that you guys have, please leave them down in the comments and I will answer as many of the questions as I can or maybe I will cover them in a future video if it's something I didn't cover uh, on this video. So always, I appreciate you guys watching these videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.